Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, as I was saying in my last video, if you saw that, I'm painting a very big wide landscape this time. There's probably going to be two or three parts to this. Um, this is one I stretched and primed myself, um, hand stretched from a roller canvas. It's uh, 36 inches wide by 18 inches high, something like that. Um, it's a nice, thick, strong canvas, primed and ready to go. Now. The, the person I'm doing this for, um, he asked me to paint a picture for him. He sent me on a photograph, but the photograph is more almost going into winter. So there's no foliage on the trees. He asked me could I put foliage on the trees and make it nice and bright and summery with lots of rich colors and lots of rich greens. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a lovely um, scene from Cork in Ireland here, uh, looking over the shaky bridge down onto the river. Okay, if you're from Cork, you know exactly what I mean. So let's go and have a bit of fun with this. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I won't be able to show the palette because it's just too awkward to try and get the video camera on the painting and get a camera on the palette as well because of the way it's set up and because it's so wide. Um, you know, one camera is blocking the other camera, if you understand what I mean, because I paint with my left. So my palette is here on the left. So I'm going to be constantly blocking the camera um, if I have a camera on the palette, it's just going to be very, very awkward. So, unfortunately, I can't show the palette today. But I'll explain to you as I'm going along. It'll be quite simple. Um, so, we'll just start with a nice sky. Nice, simple clouds in the sky. Okay, part one, painting clouds. Don't go anywhere. Okay, my friends, here we go. There's a reference photograph. I'll put it there somewhere. Um, so, if you to see, I have a nice coffee here. I must take a sip of coffee before I start. Okay, a nice bright blue sky with some clouds, all right? Now, on the reference photograph, you can see it's quite dull, isn't it? It's just very dark. There's very dark colours there. Um, my friend wants lots of bright colours, bright greens, a lovely summery day. So I'm going to start with a nice bright blue sky. Um, I'm going to take a large brush and just dampen it with some turpentine. Some thinners, I have turpentine with some linseed oil in it, okay? I'm going to take some white, titanium white, with some cerulean blue, okay? That will give us a nice bright blue sky kind of a colour. Now, I did put a little linseed oil across my sky, just very loosely with a bit of tissue paper. So that should help things move along nicely, and it is, look. See how that's helping nicely? It's a nice thin coat of paint I'm using. Okay, I'm not going crazy with lots and lots of paint. Nice thin coats. And cerulean blue is a kind of a greeny blue. Okay, it's a lovely colour for a bright blue sky. So let's just put that in all the way across. I'm not going to go too dark with the blue in this. I might take a bit more just to darken it slightly because I want to show the clouds nicely in this one so i'll take cerulean blue maybe a hint of magenta as well that will give us a nice warm kind of a blue sky okay nice warm rich blue sky and just pop that in there all the way across it's a very wide canvas isn't it i love painting canvases like this um it just really opens you up to getting details in and stuff like that because you know when i'm using a small canvas all the time it's very difficult to get lots of little details because you're working on a very small canvas very small pointy brushes with something as big as this you can really put in plenty of details so it's nice for a change and nice and refreshing so we don't have to be too concerned about you know making it very simple and all that we can really add plenty of detail into this painting now I'll just go below the tree line I put a very quick sketch on the canvas as well just a guide a couple of lines for guides that's all it is as it comes down I'm going to start adding more white and I go right through some of the pencil marks as well because these will be painted over later or right down to the horizon I need to get more white you see I used quite a bit of white there already just for that little part of the sky so let me get some more white on my palette and go back into that take some white and come across here 
and it's good practice really to lighten your horizon sky color as it comes down towards the horizon just lighten the color slightly okay it's it's good practice a bit more white pop a little white in there and just soften it across and there so we already have some nice little direction of the sky don't we it doesn't have to be completely smooth you can leave brush strokes on there that's quite nice okay i like that um okay so we have a nice bright blue sky what i'm going to do now is just take a touch of phthalo blue and a touch of magenta and i'm going to pop a little bit of that just across the top um only just slightly that's a bit pink for me it's a little bit pink i'll take a touch of black so a little phthalo blue and a touch of black perhaps I just want to darken slightly across the top and what that will do is give us more distance in the painting it will push the horizon line right back into the distance okay that's generally what it does so i'm just going to soften this now across the top piece of the canvas soften it down so we have a nice little bit of dark just on top okay um Right, so I'm pretty happy with that now. I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I think clouds. Shall we move on and do some nice clouds? I hope you can see that okay, that colour. Um, it looks fairly light. I might just add a touch more of phthalo blue into that with um, a slight touch of magenta. And perhaps just maybe blue it slightly more, okay? this you know this natural canvas this hand stretched canvas really nice heavy canvas it has a lovely drag on the canvas it really does you can almost hear it and you can feel it as you're painting compared to the cheaper canvases um, it's really nice and you can really soften colors in very nicely okay that's better now let's leave it at that i won't fiddle let's get a sky uh let's get some clouds okay i'm going to take another small flat brush a medium i have a medium stubby brush here i want to just dampen that dry it on some tissue quite dry okay because this is nice and wet we don't need any turpentine in this mix and um okay clouds we we'll start with the darker shade of the clouds so i always generally tend to put in the darker color of the clouds first and put some highlights on the clouds that's what i like to do i'm going to take some lamp black i want to take some let's see now let me see um i need to get some cerulean blue on my palette i'm going to try some lamp black with cerulean blue i think that will make a nice gray okay and it's kind of a soft greeny gray sort of a color a little bit of age then i'm going to take some white into that and then just to warm it ever so slightly a touch of magenta okay Now, I do want these kind of on the blue side. I might try a touch of phthalo in this. Um, I want a kind of a bluey, sort of a grey plum sort of a colour, okay? I know it's a very tricky colour to explain, um, but I don't want to go too kind of rich with these colours. <coughs> so, a nice kind of a shady, purpley, sh almost a purpley shady kind of a colour. You see that? I think that's nice. I'm going to go with that. If it's a bit dark, we can lighten it, okay? There's no problem, problem lightening the colours if we think it's too dark. Let's just try this. I want to kind of just scratch it across in little circles, okay? Just like that. The idea is just to make very sort of uh, flat clouds going across the sky. I'm not going for um, big... I'm not going for big, big fluffy puffy clouds i'm going for kind of nice little flat clouds like this you see and we can put our lights on top of these then very soon and as well i'm not going to go crazy with the clouds um i just want to show a couple of nice clouds going across the sky it's it's a summery day but there's a couple of clouds in the sky as well do you understand what i mean 
I think you do. Um, I'll put one or two more just over here. There's a little touch more blue in these ones with a bit of white. So I'm just kind of lightening them, letting them taper off into the distance. Do you understand what I mean? Now, as you get to the horizon on any sky, the clouds tend to go very small and very thin across, okay? Because they're so far away, and that creates more perspective in the, in the sky, all right? So what you don't want is big, big, round, puffy clouds down at the horizon because it just won't look right. They look like they're too close. So nice little flat clouds going across your horizon line. And when you get higher up, you can go slightly bigger with them, like this, you see? Just give it a little wiggle, leave it kind of taper away. And I'm going to leave one side. I think I just kind of bring the clouds in from one side, from the right-hand side into the painting, okay? I think that might be nicer. Just to add a little touch of drama in the sky, because if I put a very bland blue kind of a sky in this, it would be a shame, I think, because it's such a big canvas, it would be a shame to waste that big section of canvas just for a simple blue sky. So I think just a few clouds to add a little bit of interest into the sky, really, that's all it is, it's nothing else. Now, I've finished with the dark. Um, I'm going to start putting in some nice lights on these. And what I'm going to use is the same brush, cleaned, nice and clean. I'm going to mix a very bright sunlit kind of a colour, okay? I'm going to take some titanium white. Now, it's such a pity you can't see the, the, um, the palette, but it's just so, so awkward trying to record two things at once in a tight spot. It's unfortunate, it really is. But look, I'll try my best to explain. I'm taking lots of titanium white. I'm taking a good bit of Naples yellow, making that nice thick creamy color. And then I'm gonna try a touch of magenta, okay? I'm gonna take a touch of magenta into that. It's giving me a kind of a pink, a bright pinky sort of a sunlit color. Um, it's probably like a salmon color. Do you know what I mean? Do you know the color of a salmon? A very bright salmony color. Let me show you what I mean. You see that? You see that bright kind of a color? Um, it has a touch of warmth about it as well. So I'm just gonna go along the tops of some of these and pop a little bit of light just across the tops because I wanna show the sun catching the tops of the clouds coming down. Um, I think that would give a much nicer effect. So let me go. Let me go up here. And don't worry. Look, if it's mixing into that kind of a grey colour, that's what you want. You see, it's, I'm softening it down into the grey. It's mixing in nicely. And clean the tip of your brush always because you're picking up the darker colours. So I'll try that again now, just take a bit more of that colour, just to keep it nice and rich. And I'll go across here, perhaps, a little bit of it, just dab it across the tops of the clouds. It's only a suggestion that the light is catching some of the clouds. That's all it is, okay? It's a kind of a, a light suggestion. You could just use white if you're a little bit nervous about mixing these colours. White would do fine as well. But I think just a little bit of sunlight in the sky would make a big difference. Okay, I'm just, I just want to try it anyway. If it don't work, I can just rub it off and start again. No problem. Now, clean the tip of my brush again. Because you're picking up that dark colour every time we do this. And go along, just add a little touch of it just here and there. Keep cleaning the brush. And you may have to mix this up a few times just to get clean color on your brush, okay? Now, I'll start again now. I'm gonna mix another little touch of that. Some Naples yellow, little magenta. Now, you could also try Naples yellow with cadmium red as well. That would make a nice warm color, but these colors seem okay for now. So I'm just gonna continue on using these. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to try 
little cadmium red. So a tiny touch of cadmium red on the tip of the brush, a tiny touch of Naples yellow, and that again, that will also give us a nice warm colour, you see? I just start to damming it in between that light and that dark, just a little bit of that colour. And it's just giving us a nice warm tone. Again, look, if anything, it's just to add a little bit of colour into the sky, that's all it is. That's really all I'm trying to do, um, create a little colour in the sky. Just to add a little bit of interest into the clouds, okay? That's all I want to do. Um, it can look very bland if you just do, you know, a dark shade and some white. It can look a bit bland. So I think by doing this, it just adds a little something into the sky, doesn't it? I think it does anyway. A little bit there and just maybe a little bit across off in the distance as well. So, okay, I'll leave it at that. Let me see now. Okay, yeah, that's not that bad. I might just maybe darken some of them. I'm going to take some magenta and some phthalo blue. And I might just darken maybe a touch as well of burnt umber. I'm just going to darken with a nice dark sort of a plum. I just darken some of these here and there. Putting a little bit of darkness just at the base of the clouds. Now you don't have to go to all these extreme lengths, okay? Now you're probably not even following me along, but if you're, paint, if you're trying to kind of paint clouds, you could use a couple of these tips, okay? And there are only suggestions. Again, you might have your own particular way of painting clouds, and I bet they're probably beautiful. Um, but look, I'm just giving you my impression of creating a simple sky. Just a bit of cloud in the sky. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white, finally, and a touch of Naples yellow. And I'm just going to really now just add some brights into the sky, okay? And I'm simply just kind of dabbing with the corner of this brush. It's a very kind of a rough brush, you see that? I'm simply just going to kind of dab some colour into the bright side of those clouds. And it's really just to give it a little bit of a punch. Okay, that's all. And I think it works. It does work a little, doesn't it? Just a touch, that's all. It's only just to add a little brightness into some of the cloud, that's all. A little bit over here, perhaps. And what I'm going to do then is simply take a soft brush, nice soft fan brush, it's fairly soft. I'm just going to kind of soften some of those together, look, and just pull the end of them across the sky, just to help soften everything out into the sky, okay? Make nice soft clouds, you see that? So now we're softening the shadowed sides down into that kind of a light blue colour in the sky, softening it away, getting rid of the little brush strokes and all that kind of thing, making it nice and soft. And you can go as far with this as you like. You can soften them right back, or you can just leave it and do a little bit. It's up to yourself. But I think, I think that's a nice simple sky, don't you? Nice and simple. Now it looks a little bright on camera, okay? I will adjust the saturation. Also, I have a light overhead, which is probably putting a slight shine on the canvas, so that might be just affecting it slightly. But when I'm editing this, I will just add a little bit of contrast to help bring those colours out a little bit more, okay? Um, so that's it. Now, while we're here, before I finish up, 
I'm just going to take a small brush and we have a little bit of a building off in the distance there, don't we? I'm going to pop that building in. Losing a little bit of soft blue. I'm going to pop in that building. It's way off in the distance. It's called the Cork County Hall. Okay, it's a big tall building and it's way, way off in the distance. I'm just going to pull that in and I'm also going to just add a little suggestion of a few bits and pieces off in the distance as well. There could be little buildings and all that kind of thing. Okay, um, just a suggestion. Way, way off, very far away. Let me take a touch of cadmium red with white. I'm just going to soften some pinky colours into that. So this is, uh, this is looking quite nice now, isn't it? A little bit of shadow here and there. And even look at my finger, I'm just going to soften it way back into the background. I just want to push everything away off into the background to create a little bit of interest um, amongst the treetops. So I'm just going to finally take a round brush, small round brush, I just want to add a little touch of shadowing into that building, just on one side, okay? I'm going to put a little dark side down here. And perhaps just add a little touch of bits and pieces off in the distance. And then maybe just a little touch of a bright colour. So a little Naples yellow with some white and a touch of cadmium red. And it's really only just to add the sensation that the sunlight is really catching this building. Okay. Just that feeling of light. There's going to be a lot of light in this painting, so I want to really catch that feeling. And we're done. If you like, and I will, I think I'll just put a tiny suggestion of perhaps one or two little windows and stuff like that. There's a lot of windows in this. It's just covered windows, basically. But look, as I'm here, I might as well put a little suggestion of them. I know they're there, and anybody from Cork will know that they're there as well. Just lots and lots of little windows. And I'm going to leave it at that. That's it, finished. Okay, let's move on to these trees. Lovely, lovely trees. So, in the reference photograph, you see they're all very kind of dull. There's no real foliage there. Um, the client wants to make this nice and bright and rich and vibrant. So I've kind of focused in on one side of the canvas here. I'm going to put the palette up on the screen and the reference photograph. I don't think we even need the reference photograph, to be quite honest, because I'm not going to be following what's on the photograph. Um, I'm putting my own colours in. So I'm going to start off way off in the distance and bring a little row of bushes and trees and start getting bigger and bigger and bigger to create some perspective, OK? So let's go let's mix some color i'm going to mix some nice soft colors for the background first uh, way off in the distance a little white some phthalo blue and a little cadmium yellow and then into that a touch of magenta that will give us a nice soft kind of um sort of a greeny bluey sort of a color that's a little bit um a little bit dull let's go with some more magenta and a touch of phthalo blue Want to get nice sort of distant trees, if you like, that kind of a feeling. I'm going to go under that building there, just across. And it's really only for the distance, okay? That's all. Now, I'm going to add some pink into this. I'm going to take some cadmium red, and I'm going to start putting a little cadmium red in there as well. Look, I'm just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing very lightly. So the idea is just to give those distant trees some depth okay a little bit of depth that's all i want i'm going to take some burnt sienna 
and I'm going to pop a little burnt sienna into those because look it's a nice sunny day there's going to be lots of different colors going on through this so I have kind of the distant ones done now I'm now going to start strengthening greens okay so I'm going to dampen this brush again just slightly I'm going to take lots of cadmium yellow and I'm going to take some phthalo blue um, I want the greens in this to be nice and warm, okay? So I'm going to take some cyanide as well. That'll give us nice, see, nice kind of warm, summery greens. I'm going to pop a few through, through, through there as well. And I haven't wet this canvas um, where I'm doing these trees, so there will be a lot of scrubbing to get the paint to move around. So it's basically a case of just adding plenty of thinners into this. Um, if you're painting trees, this would be a nice tutorial for you to, to try and follow along. If you want to paint nice, big, green, summery trees, okay? So now, as it comes along, it's going to go higher and higher and higher, okay? And that will give us the perspective of the trees going off into the distance. All right, and also I'm going to have lots of different heights. So we're going to have high ones, low ones. Um, it's going to be very sort of sporadic. That's what I would say, sporadic. So highs and lows all the way across. Uh, let's get some cadmium yellow, some burnt umber, and a little phthalo blue. And you can see the canvas is kind of still quite dry, isn't it? I think I might add a little linseed oil just across this canvas ever so slightly, um, just to help the brush flow nicely across. I'm going to take some linseed oil and just pop it across, just wherever you think the trees will go, okay? Just very loosely like that. I think that should help. Now I'm also going to switch to a bigger brush. Let's go with a nice bigger brush here. Let's take some cadmium yellow. I'm going to mix a good bit of this now. And I'm going to go dark, all right? Cadmium yellow, um, phthalo blue, and some burnt cyanide. That'll give us a nice rich kind of a dark green. There, that's better. I'm simply going to just fill all of this area with that nice color. And this now really is the very early stages. Took a bit of cadmium yellow into that. And simply just go crazy with lots of different greens. That's what I would say to you. It's probably the easiest way of doing this. Just go crazy with a lot of different greens. So take some black, some brown, some cadmium yellow. That'll give us more dark greens. So we have a nice line going down into the distance. You see how that creates perspective already? So you can see the river going off into the distance. It creates a wonderful perspective. Now we're gonna have a lot of fun with these trees, I think. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just start kind of blocking in certain areas. So that's kind of the base color really done. It's just a bit of color on the canvas. I'm now gonna start blocking in areas that I want to refine. So I'm taking some cyanide, born cyanide, with born dumber, a little tiny touch of cadmium yellow. Um, I'm going to try and get some kind of nice autumn summery trees in here, kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of brown, a little bit of red, that kind of thing. Let's take some cadmium red into that, pop a little cadmium red through there. So we'll have lots of different shades. And remember, this will all be um, covered again with a lot of thick paint. But I just want to create the feeling of um, different colours going on in the trees. Now I'm going to go very dark, okay? Let's get some black, some phthalo blue, and some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to start putting in some darks in the trees, okay? And I generally like to put in darks in trees first, and then work my lights in. So I'm just going to put a lot of dark around here and there. Take some burnt umber in that. 
and we will have a nice little river bank as well coming across here so you can see how i'm just sort of keeping all of this very loose um it's going to be a very loose painting of trees okay coming over here popping a little dark in here and there because you need to have a lot of strong darks in order to show the very bright lights okay that's very very important with painting um that's what i would say so what i notice in a lot of paintings that i see online and stuff like that the trees and the shadows and that are just not dark enough and people tend to be more cautious when they're painting shadows and trees um you know just go for it don't be shy now already we can see we have a nice row of dark dark rich trees going across there don't we the next thing i'm going to do is i think i will switch to a slightly smaller brush but first before i do that i need to get some cadmium yellow on my palette okay just keep make sure your palette is topped up with paint and i'm going to put a nice bit of that on there and uh what else do i need i have some other colors uh, i take a bit of burnt umber as well a little touch of burnt umber just to make sure we have plenty to keep us going now i'm going to switch to a smaller brush back to my middle my middle sized brush that i used i won't need a big brush anymore give this a good clean out and i'm going to start putting in some lights okay now my my reference photograph went off i don't think i even need it to be honest okay let's just make this our own uh, let's get some cadmium yellow lots of cadmium yellow make it nice and thick now we've got lots of paint in there okay a little bit of thinners we need thinners very important that helps the color spread um, i'll take a little touch of cerulean blue and then a touch of white okay now that's going to give us a nice bright luminous kind of a green that's what that's what i think we should try first i'm going to load up the tip of my brush very old worn brush okay and i'm going to start up on the tops of these and i want to start just softening that color down into the trees you see the way i'm just using the very tip of the brush i'm just letting the paint go onto the canvas just like that that's really all you have to do that's the technique now we're going to kind of separate some of them so you see the way i'm just kind of dabbing along here and there um here for instance i'm going to put a nice little tree there softening it back into the dark okay now clean the tip of your brush when you're doing this let's take some maple yellow So you can already see we have different layers just by doing that little tiny bit of painting just there isn't that wonderful take a little bit more cerulean blue go for a slightly mid-tone green just to kind of mix it up a little you see and it's really helping that i put a thin layer of this previous paint on because if you put lots of thick paint on um, it's going to be very difficult to get this color to stick so the trick with this is to just add a nice bit of turpentine in there thinners a good bit of thinners don't be shy okay that will allow the paint to kind of come off and stick properly all right you can see i'm just moving it around and already we almost have a full bank of trees done don't we let's go another one here and you see it's picking up the color underneath then and it's making just different shades as you're going along that's what you want but i'm going to mix a nice rich color i'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little cadmium red with some white okay go for a nice warm color in here little touch of thinners again just a touch just to soften it a bit more let's get some nice colorful trees in here and it's mixing away with all the colors underneath creating different shades you see 
Again, clean the tip of your brush just to keep it nice and clean. That's a nice colour, I like that. Let's go back into some of that yellow. My cadmium yellow here is very thick. I don't know if you can see that on the palette, but my cadmium yellow, it's very thick in the tube. Um, I think that's because it's been quite cold the past couple of days, and when you leave your paints out in cold, um, they get very kind of hard and difficult to soften. So I should have maybe left it just on the palette for an hour or two to soften, but it's fine. It's a little bit of thinners there, and it's all good to go again. Now let's put another little tree in here. Now this is the very early stages, okay? Um, these are not finished, not by a long shot. We have a lot to do. I'm going to be using a palette knife as well. So yes, we're going to be putting lots of texture on these very soon. I've just taken some cadmium yellow with some white. Um, look, I'll even take a touch of cerulean blue. Let's create a nice bright kind of a green. Now, there we go. So this is not looking too bad now, so far, is it? Try some phthalo blue with a little white. Add a little more of a green in there, soft green. And put another little bit here. So, there we go so far. We have a nice bank of trees done, don't we? And that didn't take too long at all now, did it? I'm wondering, should I put a couple of tree trunks in there, or is there any point? I don't think there is, because when the trees are so full like this, we're not going to see many tree trunks. Um, what I might try to do is, I'm going to get a smaller brush and create a small little bank just along here, because I know there is a little bit of a river bank up here, up high. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little touch of burnt sienna and maybe a little white. I just want to create a nice little warm riverbank here and there. Just up inside those trees. Now, it turns and comes down, okay? But what I plan to do is I plan to get a palette knife in a moment and just create some texture on all of this. So let's try it. For example, I'm going to get my flat palette knife. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little touch of cadmium uh, burnt sienna. Maybe a touch of white. And I'm just going to scratch just a little suggestion of the bank way off there in the distance, okay? Now it's only just a slight suggestion of a river bank, all right? Uh, the river bank is really full with lots of dark greens and bushes and all that kind of thing. So I'm now going to go back to my small brush and I'm going to mix a little bit of a dark colour. Go with some black, some phthalo blue and some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to put some nice dark trees, bushes, all that kind of thing, just along the river bank here, okay? Um, go with some burnt umber as well even. And this now is only the very early stages of this, okay? I'm just working it up. Working it slowly, slowly up to um, what I'm aiming for, which is a kind of a riverbank full of bushes and trees and all that kind of thing. It's a very overgrown riverbank. But you can see that we have a little suggestion of the green area up above. And again, look, it only needs to be a suggestion. You don't have to go crazy with big, big bushes and all that kind of thing. So the next stage of this is to put a few highlights on all of these. So let's get some little highlight colour. 
Let's take some cadmium yellow, a little bit of white, and maybe a touch of cerulean blue. The cerulean gives you a nice soft green, I find. And let's just put some lights here and there on those. Just a few. And look, you could always use your palette knife if you if you wish. And for example, let's try it. You could take a palette knife, get some of this nice rich green, and put a suggestion of thick foliage of plants and all that kind of thing just along the riverbank. You see, it's just adding some texture really, that's all, all we're trying to do. Adding texture. We could even use that for some of the top trees as well. You see, very carefully just adding some texture into those trees. And it's just a little bit at a time, alright? Um, don't go crazy covering your entire painting with lots of lots of texture with your palette knife. It's very easy to get carried away with this kind of thing. But I would say just take your time. Just do a little bit at a time, that's all. I'm going to take some cyanide with some cadmium yellow and put in some nice warm, warm colours here and there. It's just about having some fun really, isn't it, with your, with your palette knife and your brushes, just going crazy with lots of different colour. So we've a nice soft river bank in there. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do, I think, just to darken the bottom of that river bank, just with some dark, dark, dark colour. Gonna get just any colour, any dark colour, just mix up a very dark black and green. Let's put, put a little bit of colour at the end of the river bank there. Uh, we need something dark down at the bottom, don't we? Because when we're doing our reflections, we just need a nice separation between the, flex the reflections and the bank, the river bank. Just go crazy. Just have a bit of fun, look. It's just a painting. Okay, now we can soften some of that in, here and there. Just bring it up, scribble around in all different directions, like that. Now there's one final part of this side that I want to do and I just want to add some really bright, bright, bright highlights to those yellows, okay, on the trees. Some cadmium yellow, some white and let's take a touch of cerulean and a touch of thinners just to thin that out slightly. Now I'm going to go very yellowy with this, okay, I want to show the sun almost catching some of them. So it's not too overpowering. Do you understand? It's just enough, I think, to catch the edges of the trees. Just here and there. The final highlight always brings them to life, I find. See what I mean? It just catches the eye. And again, it just adds a little more something to the painting, doesn't it?
Okay, I'm going to stop at that now just for a moment and step back and take a look. Yes, so I'm happy with that. Let's move on to the other side. I'm just going to move my camera to the other side of the painting, okay? Okay, so the next side. I'm going to take again a little touch of tissue with linseed oil. I just rub a tiny bit of linseed oil over this area. Just very loosely. We have a little couple of hoses in there as well. That's going to be nice, isn't it? So, I think first of all, we'll just fill this whole area with linseed oil and then go for a nice, strong, dark colour. A nice, rich green, yes? Okay, let's take a brush. Let's get some cadmium yellow. Lots and lots of cadmium yellow. I'm going to mix it all in there nicely. A touch of cadmium red just to warm it. And I'm going to just start by filling all of this with some nice, a nice base coat of green, okay? I'll go around the hoses because I don't want to lose sight of where they are. I'll just go around those. You see how thin I'm putting this on now? Nice and thin. A thin layer, really, that's all I want. And it just acts as a nice base to work on, I find. Um, I need some more cadmium yellow on my palette. And let's start going slightly thicker then. So once I have to get the most of that done, I then go in with thicker color. So cadmium yellow, little phthalo blue. And then start going for a nice strong colour. So we go a nice strong colour there. Um, I'm going to now start adding some nice dark into this. I'm going to go with black. Thalo blue and lots of cadmium yellow, okay? A little touch of thinners in this as well, just to soften it out a little bit. And let's start putting in some dark outlines of some trees. I take a touch of burnt umber as well. We can mix any colours we like, really. Um, as long as it's a nice, rich, dark colour for your undercoat, the base colour, what I would like to say, that's fine. Okay, that's all you need. Put a couple of nice trees up here. Nice foliage coming out of those trees. I'll take a little burnt sienna and pop a little burnt sienna in here and there. Um, in this side, it's just, now I'm not even looking at the reference photograph to be quite honest, it's just a lot of greenery, okay? Mixed and matched greenery. So I'm not too fussy really. I'm not going to look at every piece of the reference photograph because with scenes like this, okay, they change on a daily bit or even on a weekly basis. They change completely. You know, you've plants that are growing fast and get much thicker other plants may not so there's just so much going on every week now i want to switch to a smaller brush and i'm just going to go and pop in a nice suggestion of a tree off there in the distance I'll take a little bit of yellow for that you have a nice big tree off in the distance there I'm going to go for a nice rich green, okay? Kind of hangs down. Then I'm going to go along the top of these and just sort of roughen them up a bit, look. Make them look as if it's just lots of 
bits of foliage popping out from the tops of the trees. See what I mean? It's just to um, just create a little bit of interest painting, okay? Just rough it up. Try not to keep them on exactly the same. I'm going to change some of that over there because I find it's just too repetitive um, going along. So I might get a palette knife in a moment and just add a lot of texture over to that side. Okay. Um, but look, you kind of see these things as you're going along. You, you'll notice pieces that you're not happy with. Then you can just add to it and change it around. That's the lovely thing about oil painting. They stay wet, don't they? Now I'm going to um, I'm going to go nice and dark in the front of the houses here, kind of bushes coming down towards the river bank. Okay, and just a bit I think, just down around here, some darkness. Dab, dab, dab. You could use your bigger brush for this now as well, if you like, okay? The big brush will do fine. Um, but look, I have the brush in my hand. I'm just going to use it. As I have it here. Now I'm getting really dark. Down around the base. These trees right in there by the river bank. Dab, 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 all the way along. Okay? Just have a bit of fun with it. Don't think too much about it. Just dab it everywhere and anywhere, all over the place. Right, I have a nice kind of a background colour in there now, don't I? Nice and dark, all filled in. And again, it's just a matter of lightening all of these. I'm going to put in the houses first. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. Oh, what I will do first, actually, is the tops of these trees coming down over those houses. Let me just have a look at the houses on my reference photograph. Okay, we have a couple up there, a couple of nice big ones. Um, these ones here, I'm going to put these in nice and high. Yeah, so let's mix in some nice bright colours. Take some cadmium yellow, a touch of cyanide. Uh, perhaps Naples yellow. We haven't used Naples yellow much today. I like Naples yellow. Let's put in some brights on the outsides of some of these trees. Now you could kind of maybe let this dry for an hour or so just to kind of dry off just a little before you start adding new colours on top. That would help um, because it's quite wet. But we'll slowly, just slowly add these colours on, okay? Cadmium yellow, a bit of cadmium red, a little white even. I'm just going to sort out these ones up over the houses first, over these buildings. So I can then kind of put in my roof on the buildings and make it nice and straight, going straight across under these. Now I'm going to try something. I'm going to try a fan brush. I want to see what kind of technique I could get with the fan brush on this. Let's take some cadmium yellow with our fan brush. Some thinners. Okay, don't forget your thinners. And let's take a touch of cadmium red. Touch of Naples yellow just to brighten that up. It's a nice soft colour. And that works quite nice now as well, don't it? Let's go in and just push that right down into that colour underneath and soften it right in. And I just kind of move my fan brush around, you see that? Kind of flicking it around. Flick it out. Just to create a, a different type of an effect, okay? Um, it's all about just kind of creating different effects, I find. I'm going to put a little bit of that over here and there. Just 
So you've got a lot of overgrowth kind of coming down and a bit of light over on this side of that tree as well. Now I'm going to come over here to this side actually and I'm going to just cover a few of these, some of that paint as well. I don't know if you can see this now or not. Forgive me if you can't. I just want to try and soften some of these back in to the darks. And really it's about just making this our own at the end of the day. Okay. Let's do some houses. I'm going to grab a little flat brush. And I'm going to just put some nice roofs on these houses. Okay, I'm going to get some phthalo blue. And I'm going to mix a nice bright bluey colour for the roofs of these houses first. Okay, let's just take a little phthalo blue and some white. Let's add a little magenta into that. So they're a very light slate kind of a colour, but I'm going to make them a little more on the bluey side, sort of a plummy, bluey kind of a colour. Okay, let's go up here and put these in. And I'm going to come up at an angle like this because they're going away into the distance. Okay, so that creates a little perspective in the painting as well. No, just like that. Okay. We have a suggestion of a few off in the distance as well. I might just pop one or two in way off in the distance just to give a little impression of some bits and pieces over there. Next, I'm going to take a fine brush and just start putting in some chimney tops. Okay. The chimneys will really bring this to life. So here, for example, just pop one or two there. I want to pop a couple across this one here. Like so. Then I'm going to put some light on these. I'll just take some Naples yellow. Touch of cadmium red, perhaps, and some white. And I'm just going to pop a little highlight onto some of these. And they won't all be the same necessarily. See what I mean? Just catch a little bit of light here and there. And they are very old buildings, so you're not going to be absolutely perfect with these. And again, it's really just an impression, all of this. And you could add one or two darker sections of roofs as well, just to sort of, you know, break them up a little bit. Because not all the roofs are going to be exactly the same colour. A bit of darkness here and there. Now, for the fronts of these houses, we just get a smaller flat brush. I'm going to put in nice bright colours, okay? Naples yellow and white. I'm going to use that for some of them. And you can see it's mix, mixing with the green, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. There's no problem with that because that will help. That will help with the composition, you see. Take some Naples yellow and some burnt umber, perhaps, for this one down at the bottom. I'm kind of, I'm not even hardly looking at the reference photograph at this stage, okay? Um, I'm just kind of putting in my own colours because look they might change their colour of their house next year and it could be completely different 
Um, I'm just putting in a little suggestion along the way. That's all, you see. Let me take some bird cyanide and put something with a little bit of colour in there. Some Naples yellow. And I'll add a nice little dark shade then to the back of these. But you really won't see this at all because there's going to be a big clump of trees covering most of this side of the building here. Okay. Um, but look, there, we have a nice little suggestion of some houses in now, don't we? Let me take some Naples yellow with white and just brighten the odd one of them here and there. Nice thick paint on the brush, you see? Don't be shy with your paint. Just grab it and go. Don't be shy. So we have the houses painted in. Let's put in, um, there's a couple of windows on the roofs up in these as well, isn't there? So I, I do want to get some of these in. I think it would be nice. Just to do the painting justice, just to do the photograph justice at least. Just pop a few of these roof window things in, just one or two. I'm then going to get a very pointy brush and I'm going to take some black on my brush and just suggest some sides on these. And perhaps a couple of windows. And the problem you see with this canvas is because the canvas grain is nice and thick, it won't allow you to get very fine lines, which is, I think, nice because sometimes a little impression is much nicer. You see those little tiny dots now just for the windows. Sometimes an impression is just lovely. And we put a few pots on top of the roof, the chimneys here, chimney pots. And look, it's all about just showing an impression, isn't it? Let's put in suggestion of a few windows on these buildings. Very, very loose suggestion, look. Because this painting for me is all about um, a suggestion rather than painting, you know, every single detail. Normally I do like to go to a lot of detail with stuff like this, but I think for this one, I'm quite happy to just, um, you know, keep it, keep it simple. So I'm going to just take a little bit of white and just put a little dot of white along some of those. Because a light next to a dark will always just add a bit of interest to a painting. I think it does. It, it always does. Just adds a little interest. A bit of light on top of the roofs. There. And I think that's done. I don't need to do any more with those buildings. Again, it's just an impression. Now what we need to do is, let's crack on. I need to get the trees down in front of these buildings. Okay, so I'm taking my medium flat stubby brush. Little thinners. Naples yellow and cadmium yellow and I'm simply going to just kind of bring some of those bushes up into those buildings look let's make them all sit down and we're covering the fronts of the buildings with this color that's going to push the buildings back behind all of the lovely greenery that we have Just mixing another dark green here now. 
fact, I'll put a little bit of white into that, that might be nice. Going to go up and just start adding little dabs of white. You see, I'm just using the corner of my brush and I'm making it all very, very random, so to speak. So you can see how that now has sort of pushed the houses behind the tree line just slightly you know um but you can see how it works it's just kind of pushed them behind ever so slightly now i'm going to i think i'll just grab my palette knife and get a lot of stuff done with the palette knife because the palette knife gives you some wonderful effects and I've been itching to grab my palette knife there for the last 10 minutes to really just go to town with this. I'm going to grab my palette knife. I'll take some burnt sienna with some cadmium yellow. Lots, lots of each. Don't be shy. And a touch of phthalo blue. I think just to keep it slightly green, so a very warm, kind of a summery, oh, kind of a warm green. It's a warm, orangey kind of a green colour. Mix that up on my palette. I'm just going to grab some of this and let's say, uh, down here, look. Creating lots of different effects. So, for example, one of them could be dragging it down and out, like that. Okay, can you see what I mean? Grab some cadmium yellow with white. So this kind of effect, you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of dragging it down and flicking it outwards. And although you might say to yourself, well, you know, it, it doesn't look like a proper foliage and all that but it doesn't have to it's just giving an effect it's about grabbing the attention of the viewer and drawing them in with lots of different um brush strokes and effects like this you see what i mean again just adding interest adding a little interest that's all i grab some Cadmium yellow now and some white. I'm going to go nice and bright with this. You see? Isn't that just nice? I think it's okay. It's not, doesn't look like a, a real tree as such, but I think this very rough effect just really adds something to a painting. We can go like this and Suggest some bushes kind of springing up here and there. Take some cadmium red. It's about just adding lots of different stuff into a painting. Now, this these types of paintings, what I love about these is that they can very quickly turn into a nice painting. A palette knife painting. Um, I love that kind of stuff as well. It's really nice because you get lots of thick effects with your palette knife. I'm just going to take some burnt umber and just kind of put a little suggestion of something along the bottom of that. Maybe grab a little bit of black. Take a little Naples yellow, perhaps. And you see, I'm just suggesting lots of different stuff going on down at the river bank. Now I'm just going to soften a little bit of this here. You see, using the tip of your knife even, you can scrape, scrape things around.
spray fill paint just give it lots of texture and give it some you know a bit of meaning just go for it don't be shy there we go look just pop a load of dark color in it doesn't have to represent anything in particular but again as i said when you stand back and you look at it then you just start noticing little things here and there which at the end of the day that's what we're trying to do isn't it pop a little bit over there we're trying to just encourage the viewer to search search the painting and try to find little things um, let's take a little cadmium red and look we could even put a suggestion of some red flowers some of these again just a little interest into the painting there could be a little flowery bush in there somewhere Go for some cadmium yellow with some white again and let's assume or let's pretend there's some bushes here with some whitish kind of flowers on it okay now i'm going to stop and take a look i just want to stand right back for a moment and take a look because it's so important to stand right back and take a good look isn't it okay now what I notice is we have a lot of texture on this side and not much on that side. So I'm going to just grab a palette knife for a moment. And I'm going to just add a little texture to the left as well. Now, I hope you can see some of that on the left side. We grab my palette knife, grab some yellow, pop a little yellow into some of these trees as well. You know, you can use whatever technique comes to your mind. Um, you know, just little flicks. You could, you know, go around in little circles, all that kind of thing. Just use whatever you feel your hand wants to do it at that particular time. What I wouldn't do is just stand and think too much, okay? Because that could be a recipe for disaster when you're just standing or thinking too much about what to do next. Sometimes that can just make things even worse. So I'm going to stop at that. I'm happy with that. Next we have our lovely reflections. And these are going to be very strong reflections. I'm just going to put a little suggestion of just something dark along the bank here. Just to set, help separate it from the water before we start reflections. Okay. And I'm going to just sort of mess up the left hand side as well just a little bit because it's too straight you see the way it's just too straight all together so it needs to be a little more varied doesn't it but we can always do that now with the water as well you can push the water in slightly here and there as we're going well i'm going to stop at that my friends um if you wanted to add a bit more you could just add a couple of flicks of branches and a couple of tree trunks maybe just here and there very slightly but in general i'm fairly happy with that now that's quite nice so i'll be right back with part two um thank you so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed it i'll see you very soon my friends um, and take care